Hey everybody, Caleb here. Today I've got this uh, Epiphone, I think you call this an EVO base. It's a relatively low level base. This is actually Troy's base. Today I'm going to be cleaning it up and getting it ready to sell. Um, I've been looking at it to make sure the setup's good and actually the neck is, well, the strings are a little high. So that's what I'm going to try to uh, address first. It's got a lot of cleaning to do. I'll bring you along for a little bit of it, but I'm going to start with the action. That's where I've been looking, and I've I had to look up what the action should be for an electric bass because I've never worked on one before. And um, I'm on the Sweetwater website, and right now it says they're usually between 5 64ths and 7 64ths. And in thousandths of an inch, that's about a hundred thousandths and eighty thousandths, and that's switched. So, so I'd like to get the bass string to about a hundred thousandths and the, the treble string to about eighty thousandths. I think that would be good. Right now, it's really high, and I've actually got the bridge sucked all the way down, so that means I'm going to have to put a shim underneath the neck. This is a bolt-on neck, so it's not a huge deal, but it's something I'm going to have to do. I do have new strings for this as well, because these are a little cruddy. So, I will put new strings on it eventually. First thing, though, no, I'm going to try to get this neck angle a little bit better with these strings, just in case I have any problems. I'm not messing up my new ones. So, I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up, see if I can't get the neck out of the pocket, and I'll work, start working on a shim. There's some, uh, yeah, there's some wax in there, like paraffin wax or something to help those screws go in, which kind of interesting. I don't know that I've ever actually seen anybody else use it, especially in a production instrument. That being said, that looks like it's the only one, which wouldn't surprise me if the strap button was aftermarket. Now that's not a real surprise. There's actually already a shim in here. This little piece here. Um, Let's see here, it's actually two pieces, and it measures about 30, 32 thousandths, so I'll keep track of that, I'll have to add that to the one I want to add in there. Now, this shim was just at the back. I'm going to make a whole full pocket shim to support the neck better. That's funny. There's a label on the neck heel of this, which is just like a printed label they have installed. That's, I guess that's about right for a Chinese-made Epiphone. So, I'm going to set this neck to the side for a second. I are, but I actually already have a piece of mahogany, which is what this is supposed to be. Looks awful pale, it's probably something close. But I have a piece of real mahogany that I'm going to put in here. Um, I could probably get a better tracing this way. And so that's what I'll do. I'm just gonna hold my piece of mahogany up to the heel. I think we're going out far enough. I need to probably make sure that first. So I'll go cut that out, and then we'll start looking at size here. So this is my first try, and it's just a little bit too big still. Back fits well, but it's a little too big up in that area. I'll just take a little pencil and kind of do that. I'll take this back to the sander. 
Knock just a little bit more off. We'll come back and try again. All right. Well, there it drops in. I can see it's too big still. That's okay. That's better than too small. We'll mark up how too big it is. So you can see it's overhanging, so I mark it with a pencil. I'll go back to the sander and knock that off. That'll just be the easiest way to do it. And then that should fit perfectly in there. All right. Perfect. So we have a full neck pocket shim. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, make it a wedge, more or less. So basically I want, I'm, I'm gonna leave the full height back here. This is only about 60 thousandths or so. Less than that, it says 50 thousandths. So there's not much to this. It's barely more than these were, but I think this should be enough. I'm going to uh, wedge this myself. I'm gonna leave it at full height back here down to basically nothing. I think I'm gonna just try to do that with a chisel. I might go start on the sander, but I think a lot of this, or you know, do this by hand with a finger plane and some sandpaper. So I'll leave, I'll mark this so I know to leave it and then just work my way down. So basically I'm going to set this body aside for a minute or two. We're going to work on this. So I've actually switched over to the toothed blade in the uh, in the finger plane, and it's actually working a little bit better. Um, gives you a little bit more control, I think, and it'll cut a little bit easier in any particular direction. So it it. It also really makes sure that you're not getting any humps, low spots, because it cuts better in any direction. So it, I can kind of run it across it and make sure I'm not getting any weird humps. Because I want to make sure this is pretty flat so that it supports the neck all the way across. And just because it's toothed, I can come back and smooth it out with some sandpaper or something when I'm done shaping. And that is what I will do. I'll go ahead and do some more of this off camera now. I've filmed quite a bit of me just filing away at this, or planing away at this moreover. It's looking pretty good. I'm actually a little surprised how good it is looking, to be honest. But, I mean, it's looking, it's looking really good. So, I'll keep working at this and I'll bring you back once I'm a little closer to happy with it. So now I'm just going through and finishing this up. I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking. It looks a nice, even wedge all the way down. And it really does go down to just about nothing. I burnt the end just a little bit on the sander, which is kind of a shame. Of course, that's going to be the end that's in the inside, so I guess it's not a big deal. I think I'm going to dye this thing red. I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but in the event that you are, I'll be glad that I did. Uh, the other thing I gotta do is poke some holes in this for screws. I'll give that a second. I'm gonna clean up some of the carving mess and then we'll figure out how we're gonna put some holes in there. Alright, so I got that cleaned up. Now what I think I'm gonna do is flip this over and just run the awl down the hole. So 
I got a couple of marks. Uh, I think I'm going to mark them with pencil so I can find them again. A little easier. This one I broke. Not a big deal. I don't think. I guess it might help hold it together while I try to drill a hole through it. Gotta pick a drill bit now. That ought to work. You know, now that I think about it, I should probably drill these oversized. Because I really don't want the screws catching on them. So I'm going to oversize these holes. I just realized you can't see that, what I did. So that's okay, because I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to oversize the holes so the screws will just go through it and shouldn't really interact with the shim. So, I'm gonna go get some red dye. We're gonna dye this red, and then I think we're gonna check and see if it fits. See what it does to the neck angle. See what it looks like. Once again, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it all too much. But, I'd rather cover my bases and have to try to cover it up later. Alright, that's good. I've actually trimmed a little bit more off the front because I'm figuring it really shouldn't go all the way to the end because it should come in contact with the this because it should be literally to nothing so I've worked on the shape just a touch more but now I think we're good to go just a little bit of something hanging off the front there So we should be good to go. We'll, I'll get cleaned up with my, you know, get this out of the way and the die out of the way and we'll take a look at what this is going to be with the neck. Well, I changed my mind. I'm actually going to clean the body up with the neck detached. I think it's going to be easier to do. I'm going to take these parts that kind of wiggle off. I'm just going to go over to the buffing wheel and buff this up real quick. I think that'll do, you know, everything this needs. Um, I'm going to point out there's two places where the finish is damaged on the body. One is right here on this horn. I'll try to zoom it in so we can see it real good just because I'm going to try to sell this thing, so I want to point out where it's damaged. It's damaged right here on this horn, and right here on the back, or on the bottom, I guess. Now that I feel this one, I think I'm going to try to maybe do a really light sanding on this. It's a little sharp, and then we'll go buff the whole thing. So let's do that first. Well, I think it's looking a little bit better. I filled it with some finish, gave it a little bit of time to dry. It's not looking perfect, I'll be 100% honest with you, but I know that it's not going to chip out and you're not really going to feel it near as much. So, I'm going to take this over to the buffing wheel now and do a really light buffing. I did just kind of wipe this down with a moist towel to get some of the uh, dust off of there, but I think we could go buff this out and it's going to look really good. All right. All right, so I'm starting to put the neck back on here. Just getting these started. I 
the rule is start them all before you finish any, so that's what I'm doing. All right, go ahead and stick the bridge back on there and we'll see where it's at. See if we can't get these strings back on here. Maybe. Well, I guess you really can't see a whole lot here, but I'm going to tune this up and see where the action's at, see where the strings are, string height is, and then I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. Well, I've got it set up pretty good now. The treble side is just above 80 thousandths. The bass side is just above 90 thousandths. So, and it's also, it's not, the bridge isn't bottomed out anymore. Before it was bottomed out and we were still at 150 thousandths on the bass side. Now it's not bottomed out anymore, so I have a little more room for adjustment. So if someone, you know, wanted lower action, they could lower it. But if somebody wanted to go higher, that's also an option. It's kind of in the middle now, where it should be, I guess. So, now that I've got this set up good, I'm going to take the strings back off it and put some new ones on. I'm going to clean up the fretboard while that's done. And, you know, there's a lot of dusting needs done on the neck side of things. So, that's what we'll do next. I'm going to get my desk cleaned back up from doing set up and we'll be good to go. Taking these strings off of here. I don't know if you saw how dusty the headstock was, but when I picked this thing up to bring it down here and I rubbed my finger across where the name is, kind of felt like Indiana Jones unearthing some ancient relic. The headstock's really dusty. There, you can see how dusty that was. You can see where I rubbed off to see it. I'm going to clean that up real quick. I'm just checking with this rocker tool. I really don't want to do a whole lot of fret work on this. I don't think there's any high frets. To be honest, I don't think it was played enough to have any that are out of level. It would just be if it came from the factory as such. And now uh, they look pretty good. So I'm just going to try to polish them. I might take some high grit sandpaper and run it down the board first. I think that's probably my best bet. I'm going to clean the wood as well, so I'm not too worried about it. Alright, that should be good with that. I'll come through with the semi-chrome now and polish them all up. That semi-chrome really polishes those frets up. I don't know if you can tell the difference there between those two. But, it's huge. I think you can see this one just reflects and this one, I mean this one doesn't look bad, but this one is mirror finish. So now I'm going to come through and clean up the actual wood and I've got a brand new razor blade. I'm just going to do this. Alright, so next I'm going to wipe these down with some oil. I'm 
probably just going to apply with my fingers and then take off with the cloth. I find this to just be easier. A little less wasteful. It's all food grade stuff, so I ain't too worried about you know getting it all over my fingers. And then we'll make sure we wipe off all the excess. That looks way better. I don't know how well you can see it, but it um, night and day. See if I can't move the light around and it has color and isn't just kind of pale gray. Looks way, way, way better. All right. Let me get this cleaned up just a little bit more. And then we'll be ready for strings, I think. I know a lot of bass players like flat wound strings. But A, because round wounds came off of here. And B, because I'm cheap. This is getting regular round wound strings. So just something to note, there are round wound strings on here. I want to make sure it's going to move through that nut. I'm pretty sure it's going to move through there, no problem. Let's see here, the best way to do this is... Probably cut some off and then stick it in. On a lot of bases, and I think it's actually on the old vintage fenders as well, they have these tuners where you stick the end down inside. So I'm just going to cut a little bit extra. It actually, the base string gets thinner as it comes up, like a lot. So I'm just going to try to keep the thin part on the inside. On like the low E string it has to because the thick part won't actually fit on the inside of the tuner like I'm going to do here. So I put it down on the inside, bend it over, I hope you can see that, and then start winding it up. That way you don't have any uh, string ends sticking out, especially on bass strings, that's really nice because they'd be very big and very pointy. Maybe that's a better light. I'll show you that again one more time. Make sure I'm doing these in the right order. They're big numbers. I don't think this is the first bass I've restrung, but it might be the second one. So I shoved the end in. It's kind of hard to see because there's not enough light over here, but I put the end in the hole. And I bend it over. And I wind it up. Once I get these strings on here and just a little bit of tension on here, I'm going to oil these tuners. I kind of meant to do it before now, but it's okay. Alright. A lot of turning, a lot of turning. So I'm going to flip this over and oil, put some oil on those tuners real quick. I'm just going to use some 3-in-1. Pop up any excess. Do a little bit of cleaning as well. There we go. I will tune this up and make sure it's all in good 
good order, and then I think I'll try and play it. I don't exactly know how I'm going to play it yet because I don't have a bass amp here. So I will try and figure something out. Alright, so there's one more thing i got to check on here, and that's intonation. I started taking a look at it. I don't know how well you can see the tuner, but I'll try to tell you what it's telling me. So there's G. The 12 is a little sharp. The 12 is a little sharp, which means the saddle needs to move backwards. I'll try to do that. We'll retune G. Looks good. Another D now. Looks good. So, well, it looks close enough for me. So, I think this is looking pretty good. Now I just got to figure out how I'm going to play it. So I'd like to say a big thank you to Mr. Paul Wood for lending me his bass amp to demo this for a little bit. I've got it plugged in and ready to go. So I'll give you a couple little, couple little ideas what it sounds like. I'm really not sure how well the sound is going to catch on the camera, and I'm 100% sure you'll hear some rattling from the walls around here. There's a couple things that like to rattle with them, big loud bass notes. So we'll see what we can do. Here is a little bit of gain. And I'm just picking with my fingers. with this thing. I think it sounded pretty good. Um, it plays really well. That slightly shorter scale and the action actually being really low. I was almost worried it was a little too low, but now that I'm playing it through the amp, I can tell it's set really good. I'm really happy with this thing. I hope somebody else is going to be really happy with this thing. If you're interested in buying this, there should be a link in the description to the reverb page where it is listed. Um, if you have any more questions, you can obviously leave a comment in this video or send me a message on Reverb. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this little video, just a little bit of cleanup on this bass and setup. Once again, a big thank you to Paul Wood for letting me borrow his bass amp. Thanks for watching. One more thing to add on here. If you or someone you know is selling a mini excavator or backhoe in the Kansas City to Springfield, Missouri area, I'm looking to buy. My email is in the about page on the YouTube channel. If you could send me an email, that'd be great. Thanks for watching.